Hey guys, it's still here with my crazy hair. I just showered, so that's why it's all crazier. So today is another double review, and let's get started with it. The first movie I'm going to review is a Downton Abbey, still being uh, made by Julian Fellows, who did the series, who was the showrunner for the series. This is a continuation, and maybe the ending, the conclusion of this series that was a hit show. It had numerous awards. I mean, everyone loved a Downton Abbey. I certainly did. I absolutely adored the characters and everything that happened in that series was so entertaining. It was like posh England and also the uh, working class and you know it's the it's classic in a way but it was done in such a, a beautiful grand display of things you know it, it was all so good in that I'm glad to say that the movie is exactly the same in the sense that everything is just perfect the cinematography art direction costume design the makeup and hairstyle and the performances of course everyone is so amazing in this movie and this movie is so so good to be honest of course I think that if you are a fan of the show you're going to enjoy this movie uh, way more than if you weren't but it is actually a great movie and yes it, there's something to be said uh, about not getting to have a, a storyline for every single character because it's really tough to you know cram everyone into two hours and expect everything to be just perfect I mean uh, it had to be done I mean some characters are really not that shown and others are the same as in the series and others are like evolving and that's very exciting and it's of course about how in the 1920s uh, people of uh, certain wealth in the United Kingdom and in other countries realized that their time had come come basically they, they had to disappear because they weren't really getting up with the times and, and everything and the working class was slowly getting to be much bigger much fiercer it was taking the decisions in the country basically the royal family is like the last remain of all of that and I don't know if England will ever uh, dispose basically of their royal family but you know it may come because it, those are things of the past kings and queens and princesses and everything and we see that in this movie I mean it's really focused on the people below uh, the main floor if you want on the cooks on the maids on the butlers and the people that really do the things and even uh, when they are talking about the people of the house they actually talked about them evolving and just changing in order to accommodate new things that are happening because it's not always the same and I think everyone again in this movie is just great I, I mean I love Maggie Smith she's amazing I mean in a perfect world they would nominate her for an Academy Award for this performance but you know she can do this uh, blindfolded and just at any time so I don't know if that's fair to nominate her over all the people I mean it would be cool but I would be surprising if it, if it didn't happen screenplay is perfect everything is just so good and again Again, I do think that they have a chance at the Academy Awards for some of the artistic awards like costume design and art direction and makeup and hairstyles actually it, it is in the shortlist for makeup and hairstyling so I, I think it's great because that movie really did a great job transitioning from TV to movies and you it really shows and I think that's great I mean uh, this movie is just so good I enjoyed myself so much and there are like romantic moments that you normally w would be like oh but in this movie it's like yay like I'm so happy for these people because you know them and you love them and, and you want something great for them not all movies are that have that benefit this is a great movie and if you happen to be able to see it just, just just take a look at it. I mean, and if you saw the, the series, you better watch this movie. I mean, it has to be watched if you were a fan. So yeah, this is my review for Downton Abbey. So I don't know how long this double review is going to be, but my second movie is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, directed by Ta Quentin Tarantino and starring Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Margot Robbie, among other uh, celebrities that appear here and there, and of course, people that are referenced from the time of the movie. This movie is about uh, Rick Dalton, who's working on TV, and he doesn't really get much work. He's really pathetic, to be honest. He, his career is not in the best place right now. He has this friend called Cliff Booth, who is 
his stunt double and they do everything together and they're trying to just navigate the new Hollywood you know that's tired of cowboys and things like that and now it's on to new things so he's trying to to stay relevant basically the story is really really good at that point and whenever you see Rick Dalton facing his potential demise as, a, as an actor I think the movies at its best uh, when he's filming that uh, like cowboy movie that's not really a cowboy movie I mean even the directors like I want hippie shit uh, all around this and, and that's fun and, and, and it's really well done and you see how he faces acting and how he messes up and how he learns from others and I think that that's where learning Leonardo DiCaprio is at the best moment of his career. I mean, he's really, really good in this movie. His acting is really, really good. Brad Pitt is also very, very good because he's still Brad Pitt. I mean, there's a scene where he takes off his shirt and he looks exactly as the guy that we knew from Thelma and Louise. And that's amazing. I mean, that he still looks that good. I mean, the man looks amazing. Besides that, his performance is actually really great because he's a man that is very violent, but at the same time, very relaxed, very chill, very 60s to be honest. He's not a hippie but he has that hippie vibe. He really does justice to the people and you know the, the, the way people would act in that time period and of course a stuntman who's also not in the best moment of his career and he's just living by and that's the great part about this movie. The rest of this movie however is not that good to be honest. I found myself being a little bit bored at times. I was like who the fuck cares about this? I mean whenever they uh, show the Charles Manson family or they show Sharon Tate I mean this movie gets fucking boring. I mean who the fuck cares? Yeah the plot twist that everyone knows about this movie is that, that, that at the end the Manson family members instead of uh, you know attacking Sharon Tate something happens that that changes history and instead they attack Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth and they get fucked basically and, and yeah it's fun it's a, a deviation from reality and you know I can excuse that that's fine that if you want to rewrite history do it I mean Inglourious Bastards was very good at that but don't make me bored I, I mean I don't want to be bored in a Quentin Tarantino movie I mean come on now uh, you've seen Kill Bill you've seen Inglourious Bastards you've seen so many things he, that he has done and you're always like glued to the screen in this case not every time and some some scenes are just filler to be honest and some characters are just filler and it, it seems like stupid I mean all the scenes with Sharon Tate for example are just idiotic she doesn't bring anything to the movie and if the character was completely scrapped and they only talked about Tate and just you know talked about her saying oh she's my neighbor or whatever and hearing her voice at the end of the movie it would be the same thing I mean it's just stupid the rest and there's a party and the playboy mansion at some point who the fuck cares there are problems of this screenplay and it's sad because it's Quentin Tarantino who has won Academy Awards for his screenplay but in this case the screenplay I think it's flawed I don't think it's perfect I think it's really perfect at some point and it's like references and you know Typical Tarantino who fills the screen with shit basically and it's so exciting and in other points it's like what the fuck am I doing here why are these scenes here they're useless pointless I mean maybe people are going to say oh if you analyze it or whatever but the thing is that not everyone goes to the movies to analyze things entertainment I think is still the prime thing that you have to aim at uh, when doing movies and this um, movie just misses that uh, thing for a couple of scenes to be honest and a couple of moments I mean the end is it's fine but it's not that really entertaining I wouldn't say this is one of his best but I would say it is one of the best movies starring Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio because these two are just at the top of their the game I mean I don't think Leonardo DiCaprio is going to win another Academy Award what he won was really hard for him to win I mean he finally won but he's not going to win again and not soon to be honest I expect him to win again like in his 70s or something. Brad Pitt, to be honest, I think he's going to be the one winning the Academy Award for Best Supporting uh, Actors. He's due, basically. He has an Academy Award for, for producing, but this movie really shows what's the range of Brad Pitt as an actor and he's 
fucking good. So you should really see it for the performances of these two men, to be honest, because Margot Robbie is like a plant in this movie. No one gives a fuck. And most women are useless in this movie, sadly. A, a movie about two great performances and a lousy, tired script. But yeah, the movie is not that bad. It's entertaining at some points. And I would recommend to watch it if you are a completionist of Quentin Tarantino, or you just have two hours and a half to watch a movie. Thank you so much for watching this. Please comment down below whatever you thought about this uh, review, about these two movies. Share this on social media, like this video, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.